Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church TV studio with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master on a daily basis. Thank you for joining us again. Yesterday, we began a new series on what is the hallmark of being a Christian, and that is freedom the ability to dominate the things that God wants us to dominate in our life and not to be dominated by habits, uh, not to be dominated by people, not to be dominated by our fears, but to have them under our feet. And when we get under the God who's supposed to be over us, then the things that are supposed to be under us gets under us. That's what freedom is all about. We discovered that freedom is a compound word, free, which means liberty and dome, which means dominion. So freedom, therefore, is the liberty, the power to dominate the things in our lives that we're supposed to be in control of. Amen. And Christ wants us free. Now, we're breaking the word freedom down or the word free down this entire week. And yesterday we discovered that the F in freedom stands for, which is essential to being free, is to face your bondage. What is it that has you in captivity? What is it that is controlling you that you're thinking, boy, if I could only get rid of this habit, if I could only manage this particular thing, then my life would be so much better. What is it? How do you experience freedom? You first have to be willing to F and free is to face your bondage. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's go all the way back to the children of Israel when the children of Israel was in bondage uh, and God sends Moses to deliver them. And facing their bondage when they were the slaves of the Egyptian empire, we read this in Exodus chapter 2 and verse 23. It says, during that long period, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out and their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. So they're groaning, they're crying uh, to God for help. So the first thing they did was this. They were willing to acknowledge that they were not free. They, they groaned in their slavery. They, they, they realized they were slaves to the Egyptians. And in order to be free, you have to acknowledge, what am I a slave to? It might not be the Egyptians. It might be alcohol or drugs or pornography or my past or the need to pe please people or I'm, I'm, I'm in bondage to my anger or I'm in bondage to what someone has done to me that I just can't seem to get over. You have to acknowledge that you're not free. The, the Hebrews acknowledge that they were slaves. But it also says that they not only acknowledge that they were slaves, it says the Israelites groaned in their slavery, which means they didn't like it. And you cannot like your bondage if you're going to be free from it. They didn't like their slavery. But then it says, and they cried out and their cry for help because of slavery went up to God. Not only did they acknowledge that they were not free, but they cried out to God. They said, God, I don't like this. I don't like my life. And somebody needs to be calling on God right now. God, I don't like the bondage I'm in. I don't like my life. Cry out to God. And it goes on to say, God heard their groaning. They acknowledged that they were not free, were slaves. They cried out to God. God heard their groaning, which means you must believe that God is concerned. And God was concerned because God sent Moses to help deliver them. And God is concerned about you in your bondage as well. Now, what are the signs that I am in bondage? Well, there's some D words, and I want you to write these down because these are always the signs that you are in bondage to something. Here it is. These are the signs of bondage. First D word is destructive. Whatever you are in bondage to hurts your life. It is destructive. It is taking you down. It is, it is hurting you. And whatever has you bound is D, destructive. Second D word is disruptive. I mean, it's not only destructive, but it's disruptive. I mean, you, you'd plan to go one way and that habit you have calls your name and sends your life in, in a total different direction. So it disrupts you. you, you it, it steals you of your energy. So many of us are functioning, instead of functioning at 100%, we're functioning at 
at, at, at 70% or 60% or 50% are lower because 50% is us exercising uh, dominion and control over the direction our life is going. But 50% is that bondage that we're in taking our life into a total different direction. So what would happen to your life if you control 100% of you? So your bondage is not only that which is destructive, it's also that which is disruptive. Destructive, disruptive, third D word is distressful. Your bondage is that which causes you grief. Your bondage is that which causes you anxiety. That your bondage is that which enrages you and says, why do I keep falling for the same thing over and over and over again? That is your bondage. It's destructive, it's disruptive, it's distressful. And then finally, it's dangerous because when you have a bondage, you tend to throw all caution to the wind and you're willing to do things that are risky to your life, to your relationships and even to your own health. You're willing to engage in some things that could actually cause you to lose your, your freedom and could end, cause you to end up in the penitentiary. It's, it's dangerous. And the, and, and the enemy of your faith wants you to stay in bondage. And the key to being free is to face your bondage like the children of Israel did and say, you know what? I'm tired of this. I want to be free. Now, you're going to have three enemies. The Bible says all of us have three enemies. So three enemies are this, the world, the devil, the flesh. The world, the devil, the flesh. The world is that which is around you that wants to take you down. The devil is that which is coming against you. And your flesh is that which is in you. Something around you that wants to get you. Uh, something against you, the devil that wants to get you. Or the flesh that's in you. Of the three, the world, the devil, and the flesh, the most powerful force is what's in you. Your flesh. In other words... You got to be free from from me. You got to be free from me. Many people who have problems say, well, I'm leaving. I'm running away to another state. Listen, friend, if you are the problem and you leave and run away to another state, then guess what you're doing? You're just taking your problem to another state because the problem is you. But God wants to set you free and God will set you free if you acknowledge I'm a slave. God will set you free if you cry out to God and God will set you free if you believe that God is concerned about you. It is time to be free from the things that is destroying you, disrupting you, distressing you, and is dangerous to you. And Christ wants to set you free. Let's start, first of all, with facing your bondage. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today and help us to get on the course towards true freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> well, thank you for being with me again today with another powerful point to ponder. Look, everyone needs a church home. Everyone needs Christian fellowship. And we'd like to invite you, regardless of where you are in the world, to connect with St. Stephen Church if you don't have a church home. And so you, you email us at St. Stephen Church here, Louisville, Kentucky. Here's our email address, newstart at ssclive.org, newstart ssclive.org. Thank you so much for being with me again with another powerful point to ponder. And until tomorrow, don't forget, during COVID-19, stay safe, stay sane, if you, and if you can, stay home. I'll see you tomorrow.